Good day, Mike. Thank you for agreeing to do this video interview with me today over Zoom about your new book. Before we get into that, can you please give us a little bit of background about yourself in uh, sales enablement? Yeah, absolutely. So, hi, Guy. Thanks for having me. And uh, I, th yeah, I think that context would probably be helpful for our viewers. Um, it's hard for me to believe, but this is my 37th year in the sales profession in some role or another. And I spent the last 27 of those now as either a corporate leader running an apartment or a consultant working with clients and helping companies try to drive revenue growth to various sales transformation methods. Um, in terms of employers or clients, it's a big mix. I've done work for companies like GE, McKesson, Hyatt, Intel, Cisco, LinkedIn was a lot of fun to work with, uh, Brainshark, which was a sales enablement software company, and even a startup software company uh, back in the day. So in that work, I've led teams from two to 30 people in internal departments, and I've supported sales forces from five reps to 6,000. I'm also the founder of Transforming Sales Results, and today I'm working as the VP of Sales Effectiveness Services for Sparks IQ. And here I support clients as they implement solutions for more effective sales hiring, sales training, sales coaching, and then work with them to design and implement sales enablement systems that get results. Um, for Sparks IQ, I'm the co-author of Modern Sales Foundations. That's a sales methodology and training curriculum. I'm the author of Sales Coaching Excellence, that course, teaching frontline sales managers how to coach effectively, and the author of the book we're chatting about today, The Building Blocks of Sales Enablement. So that's, uh, that's me in a nutshell. Well, thank you for that. I uh, I read the book about a month ago. I've got the Kindle version of that. I found it very fascinating. Of course, you and I have discussed these kinds of things before, but uh, we're both kind of performance-oriented, performance-based kinds of guys. And uh, I was really looking forward to, you know, your take on sales and enabling sales with a kind of a performance uh, lens to, to what you were writing. So let, now let's shift uh, to our focus on your book, uh, my three-part question to start off is, uh, who did you write it for, why did you write it, and what do you hope the takeaways are for the readers? Okay, so who, why, hopeful takeaways, here goes. The, uh, the who is really varied. The primary target, obviously, is sales enablement practitioners, and that's whatever name they go by, right? It's uh, sales or revenue enablement, commercial excellence, sales effectiveness, whatever the name du jour is. But it's also for frontline sales managers, senior sales leaders, even C-suite leaders or private equity investors, anyone who has a vested interest in understanding how to move the needle on the metrics that matter most for the sales organization. And, you know, in our world, that could easily include L&D, talent leaders, performance consultants, OD pros, and more. So it's a pretty varied audience. If you're trying to move the needle in the sales organization, I think there's something in there that, that will help. The why is really just to help these people get better sales results. It's to share a 30-some year body of work that has grown out of trial and error, bumping my nose, learning from others, failing, winning, you know, and figuring out, uh, you know, how the gears turn. Um, I worry a little bit, Guy, about the state of the sales profession right now um, and the state of sales performance improvement work. And so I guess this is my way of trying to give back trying to help those people out there who are going through what I went through 30 years ago, bumping my nose and trying to figure out how those gears turn. Uh, takeaways. Um, you know this better than anybody. Organizations are like a complex maze of systems, processes, methodologies, tools, and, and people. And it, it's messy in there, right? And it's, it's often really chaotic. And this is probably nowhere more true than in a sales organization inside a company. They're fast paced. Um, they're often led by type A personalities who have the attention span of, uh, of a teetsy fly. Um, I, I say that with love. Um, and they're under a lot of pressure to perform, right? So 
I am frequently and sadly reminded that control is an illusion, right? But I hope the big takeaway is that the building blocks are a framework that can help people start to bring some order to all of that chaos. And then the systems that I talk about will help them implement the blocks and align those performance levers, if you will, to get the better results that everyone is, is hoping for. I think the other big takeaway that I hope will shine through is that we really need to get back to and build better buyer and customer acumen. We need to shift focus away from us to them. I don't know why this is counterintuitive, and I, I think it was Zig Ziglar for, who probably said it first years ago, we all can get what we want in life by helping enough others get what they want. And I think sometimes in the sales profession, we get so wrapped up in our products and solutions and quotas and commissions that we lose sight of that, that we get results by helping others get what they want. So when I say how important the customer is in a room, right, Zoom room or in, in physically, everyone always is nodding their head, right? But then when you look at the behaviors in their company, they're not always truly buyer and customer centric. And I think this is something that we really need to change. I think it's very pressing and it's come to a tipping point now, because if you look at the research, Buyers are pretty fed up with the way that sellers are, are acting and the way that we're working. And they want to buy more and more digitally. They want to buy and research more and more on their own or in groups in their company. They're looking out to peers and to uh, review sites more than they're reaching out to company sales reps to, to get guidance. And these are things I think that for the betterment of the profession, we absolutely have to change. So those, those are my hopeful takeaways. Thank you for that. Uh, yes. I think the whole notion of consultative selling and uh, built, you know, enabling that approach and, and getting people to pivot to that is, is really key and it's it's amazing uh you know from my arm's length to the whole thing uh, how long <laughs> this has been discussed and uh, presented and written about yet uh you know it seems like very few people um are, are doing this so i've really applauded uh, what i've seen from you and your approach to all of this so so let's shift gears now into the book itself and uh um can you walk us through the book and tell our audience, you know, what you're covering to some level of depth and give them a sense for, you know, what might be in it for them uh, as a reader of this book? Sure. Yeah. I, I actually had uh, Dave Brock do a forward for sales leaders and Tamara Shank do one for sales enablement. So if, if you think of those two audiences, at least to start, Here's a, sort of a tour through what they can get out of it. There are actually um, 14 building blocks, uh, but there are 12 of them that sit sort of in the central of the diagram, you know, and, and so, you know, there's a three, three on the top and then four rows, right? So those things are buyer acumen, really understanding your market and the buyers, the personas that, that buy the things that you sell. Then because you do that and you understand their process, their journey, their exit criteria, you can start to develop buyer engagement content. One, to engage them to want to do business with you or to at least try to see if they do, see if you can solve a problem they've got or enable an opportunity. But then also giving them the information that they need as they move through their buyer's journey in each stage. And doing that, let's say you've got four or five, or as, as Gartner is now saying, up to 19 decision makers in a complex deal. Not all of those people need the same thing to move forward in any stage. So you need to have the content to serve them, help them make good decisions. Then there's the sales support content, which allows you to support your sales force. So that's the first row. The second row is something that everybody is familiar with, sales hiring, getting the right people in the right seats on the bus, sales training, especially in sales enablement, onboarding is the topic du jour almost every week, um, getting them up to speed, but then also the ongoing training. And then sales coaching to make sure that you know, that training sticks and that we're working with people to improve performance. The next row 
is often thought of more as sales operation stuff. It's sales process, sales methodology, and sales analytics and metrics. But I don't really, I don't make a distinction. I understand the difference in the roles, sales ops, sales enablement. But these are the things that need to be done by someone. And sales enablement working cross-functionally needs to at least be involved in those things. So process, methodology, metrics. In the last row in the middle 12, sales technology and tools, right? Making sure that you have the tools you need to support your process and methodology and your buying journey that you're supporting. Sales compensation, uh, sorry, sales compensation and recognition your incentive plans and programs, and then a box that sits by itself that ought to be an entire uh, set of building blocks on its own, sales manager enablement. You know, we're getting to the point where it's relatively common that we want to enable the sales reps. It's still a little less common that we're spending the kind of attention on the sales managers, which is odd because they are the performance lever really in a force multiplier in any organization. So there is an entire system behind that little tiny block, but I had to get that in there. Now, all of these, all of these building blocks are tied together by two other blocks systems thinking. So the systems I work with most frequently are a sales hiring system, a sales training system, right? The, the sort of that's, you know, includes the uh, support things, uh, a sales management system. And when you get these systems in place, the systems are how you execute the blocks in the real world in some repeatable, replicable way that will produce predictable results. So systems thinking is a big thing that ties it together along with communication and communication. I mean, in two specific ways, the communication to the sales force. And I believe that should funnel primarily maybe an exception for the CRO and the CEO, but it should primarily funnel through sales enablement and it should be done in a, a some sort of consistent pattern in some sort of consistent, maybe info mapped format in a place where reps know they can go and look at something that they, they need to find, or they missed last time. Right. So that, that we're not all like throwing things at the sales force on any given day in any given format. And the other piece of communication is internally, I believe sales enablers should be doing cross-functional collaboration and creating a charter on how they're going to work with these other cross-functional collaborators in marketing or product, et cetera. And who's going to own what, who's going to support what, what reporting is going to be put in place, how they're going to hold each other accountable, but basically how they're all banding together to support the sales organization in supporting the customers. And when you get that kind of alignment, it can be very powerful. And then the last block, is something that doesn't really apply to everyone, but I, I called it sales support services. And some organizations who have the budget and the manpower, they might offer things like presentation support, helping customize or build presentations. They might have a deal desk where the sales rep can bring a complex deal into a group of experts who can help them strategize. It might be coaching services to help coach the reps or even better, maybe someone to help coach the coaches. So some organizations have those and set them up with a, a service level agreement, an SLA, on how they're going to provide those services to the sales force. I've even seen that SLA LA done with sales engineering or the subject matter experts or the overlay professionals that get brought into a deal on when you're selling products that are so complex that the rep perhaps doesn't have maybe the deep technical understanding, they'll bring in an engineer to support them. And sometimes that's even done on an, an SLA or a sales support services basis. So that is pretty much the building blocks. And then in the book, I also have uh, some some bonus chapters at the end, if you will. Um, one is really a performance-based approach to sales onboarding, because I see so much effort being thrown into onboarding people, but we're all doing the same thing and expecting some different result. And boot camps just make the hair in the back of my neck go up, right? Because they don't really work from the way people learn or changing performance, driving behavior. So I talk in there about a milestone 
based and chunking, sequencing, layering, and really teaching what people are going to do on the job, what a novel concept, you know, in the way that they need to do it, and then validating and supporting them uh, as they implement. Um, and then the, the last piece really um, is a look to what I hope is the future of sales enablement, moving more toward a performance consulting approach. So that's the book. Those are the blocks. And, you know, hopefully people can determine, oh, that's something that's would be great for me or, you know, run screaming. I don't know which. Well, I think it, it, it has great potential for bringing order to the chaos, as you talked about a little bit earlier. And, and as I was going through the book, I thought this actually would allow me to step back and assess my organization to decide where are my pain points. Mm -hmm. And you provide, I think, enough guidance for people to make that assessment and perhaps guide their implementation, which would be different from organization to organization, but but to be right. to frame the the details necessary to, you know, truly, you know, polish these these building blocks up. Yeah, I've got some webinars where I, I do that exact thing. I say you can really use these blocks as a diagnostic guide. And you go through and you say, where am I on this block? If I'm going to rate myself of a scale of one to 10 of what I've got in place and effectiveness, where am I? And then, you know, sometimes in organizations, you just have to make some, what I call Geffen decisions, G-E-F-N, good enough for now. Am I good enough for now on that block? Where are my biggest gaps? And how do those gaps tie back to the strategic objectives of the organization or what the sales leaders are trying to accomplish this year? So if you do that, then you're now really starting to manage sales enablement in a way that will contribute to the strategic direction of the company, to the goals that executives want to achieve. And that's how you get that, that mythical seat at the table that we've all been talking about for years, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, thanks again for uh, uh, providing us with uh, an overview of, of the entire book and your entire model. And I'll be sure to include... Uh, uh, sh uh, in the show notes, URLs to some of your work, and perhaps we can even include some of these webinars and point people to that so that they can, you know, get a little bit more in depth. But but let, back to the book. So where can people find this book and in what kind of formats might they find it? Yeah, so it's actually available in more places than I expected. Um, it's out there at Barnes and Nobles. It's on Abe's, other book outlets. But primarily the two places I send people, Guy, are to Amazon. I just go right to Amazon, type in the building blocks of sales enablement or my name as an author. And it's up on TD.org, the ATD site in their bookstore with a discount for ATD members. Um, it's available in... Uh, Kindle on Amazon and in paperback, and ATD sells it in PDF and paperback. Excellent. Well, thank you. So I hope our audience uh, follows up and, and checks this out. Uh, I'm sure that some of them will be looking at it because they are part of that enablement of, a, of sales. And uh, thanks for sharing your wisdom and insights in this book and uh, with us today in this video. Thanks, Guy. I appreciate uh, being here and chatting through it, and uh, I'll look forward to seeing what people think. Thanks, Mike. Bye-bye.